Everybody is wondering what and where they all came Hey, Internet. From. It's Paul. It's Matt. We are here today to talk about The Leftovers. Season 3, Episode 4, Goodbye, Melbourne. I didn't do that well. That's a horrible... Anyway, whatever. I'll practice my Australian accent for next time, because they're going to still be in Australia, so we'll do that. Australia, yeah. um, but, uh, and we'll call each other Bruce. And we'll br <laughs> Bruce. <laughs> I wear a hat with corks on it. No, I learned that from Monty Python. Now the only... Okay. Um, so, quick recap. Yes. Or not quick. so quick. <laughs> <laughs> this is, like, so plot-heavy. It's unbelievable. But, okay. We open this time the song... I don't know actually the title of the song, but I'm going to guess that the title of the song is This Love Is Over, because mm. that's kind of the last refrain that we hear of the song that's being played. Um, I believe that is a uh, foreshadowing of Kevin and Nora splitting up, because uh, they it's, the episode ends with a, an explosive fight, <laughs> verbal, but yes, a fight nonetheless. So there's that. We start with the airport check-in scene, and... Nora, they're at the counter, and Nora says, you know, don't you do global entry, because I'm an officer, and I can do this, and uh, she takes off, and, and uh, Kevin does not have global entry, so he can't no. you, do the same technique, so they have to split up, and she says, uh, I'll just see you on the other side, and I think that line, one thing, it shows that them taking separate lives yes. foreshadowing again and just that see you on the other side thing because she's there we can we can argue whether she's there to catch them as frauds but it sounds like i feel like she's actually there because she's seriously considering radiating herself to go be with her kids yes um or at the very least radiating herself and then dying i don't know that i think she she thinks the chance to see her kids is worth it right like if she dies okay I don't know, maybe. But anyway, so that see you on the other side is kind of a there's a, there's a lot there's a lot behind yeah, that. Yeah, there is. Well, I don't, actually I don't know that there is. Okay, <laughs> okay. Who knows if it means? I, the I'll same bet this thing text wise, maybe the, not in her mind. Yeah, or you know, who knows if it means the same thing to the um, writers? That's it. You know, who knows? Right, right. But okay, it's out there. Yes, and it does uh, seem to make some sense in some in the way the story is going. So, just yeah, I mean, we mentioned it, but just as Nora and Kevin have arrived in Australia, so that uh, Nora can meet up with the people that have offered to radiate her, and with the same type of radiation that was found on the departed folks, a la her kids, and so she could go join her kids for twenty thousand bucks. Right, That's, and she has told Kevin that she's only doing this, and she actually tells him a little bit later here. That she's only doing it to try to catch them in an, in, fra in a fraud action, um, but she's really um, up on this thing more than just a, I'm going to catch people in the act kind of thing. Right. Um, so she goes through security. We learn that she's got this twenty thousand dollars strapped to her, uh, and I guess you can't travel with more than ten thousand dollars. I don't know if that's, that's the thing. Said. Is that? I know oh. they say that in the show. Okay. Yeah, I mean, them, yeah, who knows that if it's related thing? to what's going on with the... Uh, right. With the... Um, what is it called? The coming apocalypse. The coming apocalypse. Or with... Uh, yeah, I mean, who knows? Or with the, you know, the uh, event that happened. Yeah. Um, so she's not... So she's apparently not allowed to travel with more than $10,000 cash. And she has to have 20000 so she strapped it to herself. Now, interestingly, too, it looks like she... She seems pretty... I think she's enjoying the espionage quality of it. Like, there are some, some points in there where we see... Some, I, I was just picking up non-verbals. But it seems like she's kind of really uh, energized by sneaking around. Like, ooh, I have this stuff and I'm going to do this mission and it's all secret. And I don't know. I got that feeling. You know, when she approaches the, the guard, I think she like... Mm, and she gets a smile on her face. Hmm. Ah, and, and she tries to be approachable, and she, I don't. There's just like this. I think she's enjoying the spy versus spy kind of quality of it. Hmm. That's what I picked up, which is also maybe leads to why they have sex in the bathroom. I don't know, like a, hmm. I'm feeling so empowered right, by right, this right, right, right. moment. But it's okay. So I felt like that was uh, Kevin's initiation, though. Was I wrong? Or maybe he was just excited about what she was doing. And so she was excited, too, she realized it. Yeah, kind of in that moment. 
But so she gets through the through security. There's a there's an, a, a weirdo who's like, I have to get to Antarctica in my radiation suit. And they're, oh, yeah. you know, they're like, oh, don't mind and those then he, guys. The guy says, another one bites the dust. Which I got, next week, next week's opening song. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> another one bites the dust. All right. So that, when that happens, uh, all the virtual dollars come our way. Apparently, that's what happens. Okay. Um, so... So they get in the bathroom and they they have sex. But before that, um, she uh, Nora shows Kevin like, oh yeah, see, I had to tape all the money uh, because you're not allowed to take more than ten thousand dollars, and I have twenty thousand. And he says, well, why don't you just give me ten thousand? <laughs> and her response is, huh? <laughs> and it just never occurred to her. Um, and it, it again, it's that sense of, I feel like. She intends to either, as we say, she's either going to go join her kids or die. But either way, she's going to do this on her own. Mm. And I feel like she's already making Kevin an afterthought. She's she keeps finding reasons to have them get apart. You know, she she doesn't. They, she goes to a different part of the uh, security uh, when they get to the hotel. She's like, "Don't don't you want to see your dad?" He's like, that's not really why I came here. I came here to be with you. Yeah, but you know, while you're here, why don't you go do that? And you know, are you going to follow me? Yes. <laughs> don't you uh, stay here? I, she doesn't <laughs> want him around. Any, I think she's kind of hit a. I'm, I'm going away. I think she's, I'm going away. But okay, we can we can chat about that. Um, so they get on the. All right. So then they get on the plane, and. There's another like really telling moment <laughs> when uh, she's explaining her plan. Oh, we're gonna catch on this fraud, and and uh, you know they know everything. And and uh, Kevin says, "Oh, do they do they know about me?" You know, she's like, "Yep, yeah, probably." And you know, he's like, "Yeah, well, then would they believe that you would do this?" You know, with me around. She's like, "Yeah." <laughs> And she said, well, what, would you, what are you going to tell him? And she says something like, well, I'll tell him. Um, I'll say that we're in a toxic, uh, codependent relationship. And that both of us have agreed that uh, you know we'd be better off apart than together. <laughs> Which is like, oh, and there's a silence. I'm like, oof. Um, that's truth speaking. Where she's pretending. Uh, but she's really saying, I think, what she's really thinking. That they're in a toxic codependent relationship. I'm not sure if she's conscious of it. Okay. Okay. I think she might have been saying it and not knowing that that's where they are. Not knowing that's where they actually are. Okay. Uh, it just It's a subconscious spilling forth yeah. moment. Okay. They get to the hotel room. Or she's being sort of ironic, like... I mean, what do you expect? Like, you know, okay, I'm going to leave anyway, so that's why I took you with me. And, you know, hey, this is the Yeah, I don't situation. think she was going to take him with her until he asked. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She definitely. was just going to go on. No, but I mean, she the way she sort of reacted to him come, wanting to come along was sort of like, um, okay. Right. You know, like, you know, there's nothing that, you know, you doing that is going to have me, you know. She didn't actually say goodbye to him, so I'm not sure that she knew what she was going to do, you know, so. Okay. All right. And she'd maybe rather have him there for moral support or something to, I don't know. I, I, I don't know that she can think that way. I think she's just sort of like, sure, you can come, you know. Um, she, she ended up having sex with him an extra time. <laughs> so, you know, uh, she... Uh, she, yeah, she may not be thinking it all the way through is all I'm saying. Okay. I mean, she, she may be so focused on what is the situation, what can I find out about what they're doing that, uh, you know, she's not focusing so much on the fact that, you know, they're really in bad straits. Okay. All right. Um, I can see that. I can see that she's not, uh, right, deviously putting all the little pe yeah. puzzle pieces together and right. has some Machiavellian scheme. Right. Uh, they're in the hotel room in Melbourne and they just, they talk about the book because Kevin has the book with him. Yeah, he, yeah. He claims to have read it, but then it's pretty obvious that he hasn't read it yet. Well, I don't think they even reveal that so much about it at that point, right? 
Right, but she sa- he says, oh, yeah, I read it on the plane while you were asleep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then she starts to read a passage. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, well, you would know what comes next. But she reads, so that's oh, that's right, yeah. She reads that point of... Uh, pushing a little girl in the well. Girl, right. And... And then she says, uh, and then he said, wow, how does how do you, Matt come up with this stuff? Yeah. Which is like, she got it from Kevin. That's where... Yeah, that's where exactly. <laughs> what do you... Like, uh, yeah, she right. She clearly does like, not know what's been going on. Right, which is yeah, the idea they're keeping secrets from each other. They talk right. about that as a theme, and and so this is something obviously she does not know, or and he's been holding that back. And we find out later, you know, we we hear him say, "Well, the last time I was honest with you, you chained me to a bed and yeah. ran off." <laughs> um, and but I also find it interesting that the scene that they read that she reads is you know pushing the kid in the well is again it's killing a kid, right? Which is you know, comes back in this episode. Uh, you know, the idea of kids and safety and uh, anyway. So that was, it, it's interesting that they brought, they used that scene in that moment. So mm. she then leaves to go on her mission and he wants to come with her. She says, no, you stay. And then she, she, you know, she really, I feel like she has no intention of coming back at that point. She thinks one way or another, I'm going to be, but she's like, you know, we'll go to have dinner. She's placating him big time, but I don't. And I think inside she's like, "Yeah, I'm never. I'm not coming back." Um, uh, I don't think. I think she's still kind of waiting for something to, like, oh, this is you know, this is so clearly fake or whatever. She's looking, still looking for that, and so she, you know, even though she's putting herself in the situation where I think she, I, I just don't think she's committing. Okay. You know, she'll be happy. You know, perhaps what she's going to plan to do is, oh, shoot, this is real. Okay. And then make a call. <laughs> I do like it the, that way. In the, in, the, <laughs> in the airplane when she's given her plan and he's like, well, you don't have jurisdiction. Right. right? And she's like, no, I'm just, you know, yeah, yeah. kind of wing it. And like, right. what, how do you even arrest people? Yeah. Any, like, her plan <laughs> yeah, makes yeah, yeah, no yeah. sense on its no, face. It so, uh, anyway. Well, you know, perhaps she's just wants to expose the fraud. Yeah, you know, right. She I, hadn't heard of it even before that. So, but the way she described also it, the people that you know she worked with hadn't heard of it either. So she really doesn't have that much information, or at least well, she has a certain amount of information, but potentially she should get more. Even though, yeah. <laughs> and how is she going to make arrests? Like I mean, just yeah, it just make, sense. make arrests. No, but you know, she's gonna get herself in trouble. If she could she say, would. "Look at all these people," and I went through the place, and now I have, you know, I mean, yeah. potentially she could. To take pictures of Because it seems like there's a lot of times when she's been sort of like, okay, let me just see. Ah, okay, now I can see where you're scamming people. And then, now I'm going to get my revenge. (laughs) So she leaves uh, Kevin in the uh, hotel room. He decides to read the book, which he does. And then he's got this issue with the TV and it won't shut off. I think he starts thinking it's maybe on for a reason. Right. He sees there's a story about his dad's disappearance. Yes. And also the Other sheriff, Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. Not a good day if your name is Kevin. <laughs> okay, so he's like, oh, the TV's talking to me. And it cuts to this Good Day Melbourne show. It was in the Good Day Melbourne. They talked about well, that. It was really, they were in the, right. And so they, but they cut away to the cooking but segment. On a lighter note. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it's, so it's, yeah, this guy with a chef's hat in the background Kevin is sure he sees Evie uh, holding up a sign, holding up a sign, and staring at him. Yes, and he even says, "Like, are you talking to me? Can you hear me?" Or something like that. Cuts out. Um, so he's convinced Evie's trying to talk to him through the TV, and he races down. He realizes the show's being filmed live, so he races off to go see if he can get, find her in person. Nora. Meanwhile, is waiting at the bus stop that she's been given the instructions to go to the bus stop. Street. Yeah. <laughs> and so while she's waiting and there's like a minute left before the bus arrives, this woman comes up and makes this desperate plea. Will you please hold my baby while I go do a job interview? I, which is a, a kind of a lame whatever. Well, but, you know, okay. I think that she doesn't want to give the impression that she's so burdened with 
parenthood that she wouldn't be a good employee. I hear you. It was just kind of odd that she would pick. Anyway, we 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 learn later, or we suspect later. It's implied later that it, this is part of a test that this group is giving to Nora. But it's suggested. It is suggested. At least it's, it's Nora's theory. They deny it. Yes, but they deny it in a kind of unconvincing way. I think too. Anyway, but okay. Yes, it's possible that it's complete coincidence. But I. I think it was part of the yeah, test. Yeah, I kind of feel like it was kind of a part of a test. But, I don't know, they did a really good job. <laughs> <laughs> so she comes up, this woman comes up, is like, please hold my baby. Please, blah, 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 blah. please, 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 please. Nora agrees, takes the baby, bus shows up. She's like, you wait. The like, bus driver, yeah. Brr. And she races into the room where this woman's having her interview, hands her the baby back, like, sorry, I got to go. Kind of does the... Discrimination's illegal, or yes, something like yes, that, yeah, yeah. to try to give a point to the uh, job interview guy, and then races off and tracks down the bus, gets on the bus. It's like, ah, I made it. Obstacle eliminated. Here we go. So Kevin uh, arrives at Good Day Melbourne. Yes. Sees Evie across the street, follows her down an alleyway. She turns around, does not appear to recognize him. It, from from a, a viewer standpoint, we're seeing the the actress who played Evie. Yes, uh, standing there and speaking like, with an accent. Speaking with an accent, and she says her name is Denia something. something something something. So he's like, "No, you are. I know who you are." And the stranger comes up, <laughs> huge hulking guy. Of course, has to be huge hulking guy. He's like, "This this guy giving you trouble?" This is Australia. And then he just <laughs> headbutts Kevin. <laughs> Uh, takes him out. Not before Kevin takes a picture of Evie. Yes. So, then we have uh, da, 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 da. Nora arrives at the it's a warehouse. Kind of a, yeah. They even mention, like, it's kind of creepy, isn't it? Yeah. We Sorry for the surroundings, but it is what it is. Um, so, while they're, when she comes in, they're playing Take On Me on the piano. Oh, yes. Uh, and Take On Me there's probably three versions of Take On Me starting here throughout the end of the episode. Oh, yes. There's one that's kind of like... Blinkity, 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 blink, kind of like oh, kids' yeah. version one. Oh. Then there's like the actual song. I think we played at the end. Anyway, there's it. it's obviously they're like, this is important. Um, we can address that here. What I think the reason it's important is... I'm trying to think how Take On Me, that line, is important. Maybe because she's trying to have them take her on, but I think it's the actual line. Uh, the <laughs> which I can't. I do not sing uh, soprano, but um, <laughs> you can say I'll be gone. I say I'll be gone <laughs> in a day or two when he gets really high. <laughs> um, I'll be gone in a day or two. Uh, the idea being, oh, you know, one way or another, either she's going to use this device and be gone, or maybe. In a few days, the apocalypse comes and everyone will get... No, you could have something. actually just mounted it and then put it in there. Oh, that's true. Wow, what a great right. voice he has. Okay, great. Awesome. <laughs> I'm aha. So what do you what do you take as the uh, meaning behind using the take on me? Um, I mean, that's as good as any reason I can't think of. It's not striking me as strongly as the other ones. I mean, I liked it. And everything, it more it seemed to me is is providing this very strange. To me, it had uh, might have been more followed the category of um, the version of uh, uh, was it personal Jesus that they chose in the top of the show, which is more like things that are poppy that kind of have oh, a, sure, right. and a then they use spiritual a... flavor. So it's you know more like look at the, the weird lengths people are going. <laughs> In pursuit of their, you know, their the desperation really, which you, you can see is as um, perhaps is uh, in a parody sort of way, mm-hmm. or at least in a sort of in a way that's against the type. So this happy poppy song about "I'm going to see you, I won't see you, I'm going to be gone, gone really yeah, soon" is you know interesting way to sort of highlight how desperate they all are. Um, I like that. I like that. Also, I did. I was watching it with the captions on, and it was noting that every time that the two scientists were talking to each other in another language, that language was Dutch. 
Uh, they right. were, they're Dutch. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I was watching that too. Um, it was interesting, you know, sort of... Uh, I do believe that it's supposed to be a scam. Um, and I'm not convinced... I mean, I don't know. I don't know whether or not those people are actually dying, but I think they do a good job of anticipating Nora's uh, skepticism. Yes. Uh, so we, and I, I give myself a tad bit of credit for last week, thinking maybe that guy that doused himself with gasoline and set himself on fire was one of the rejects from this program. And I think that's true because he said he asks Kevin Garvey Sr. Mm-hmm. before he dies, "Hey, would you?" kill a kid to cure cancer and kevin's like nope and this guy says that's what i said we'll jump forward here a set a little bit but when nora gets that same question which is the, you know okay we have one question for you because she says eh, kids die every day plus i get to cure cancer yeah i'll do it well but she you know she thinks of, about it she well she asks them questions about is does. it my kid and they say kid. no and but for well no she asked my kid, and said, "What well, doesn't matter?" It's like, "Well, if I'm going to make this decision, then I yeah. got to, I got to know that." Um, so they say, "No, it's not her kid." And she says, "Well, will they die day. in pain?" Right. Yes, and no, they won't die in pain. So she's like, "Yeah, fine." Uh, and they tell her she's answered it incorrectly, which she answered the answer the opposite way yeah. of the guy who yeah. answered it incorrectly last right. episode. Right. So she even asked, though, if I had answered it that way, you would have seen and. They kind of said it was the vibe or something. It was something about it that... I think they were tipped off that she wasn't really into it. Because we, they say the one science is like, she doesn't believe that you're going to do this. You're going to go through with it. That you're interested, but you're not going to do it. Uh, the fact that her heart rate was the same when she was put into the box, I think was a tip off. Because they say, oh, you know, usually people's heart rate gets higher, but yours was the same. And she says, oh, thanks. I don't know that it was a compliment. And she takes it as a compliment, like, oh, cool. But I think maybe what they were saying is, hmm, what this suggests to us, perhaps, is that you're not anxious about being in this box and being radiated because you don't intend to actually do it. Hmm. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, that, that to me could have been a tip-off. There is the thought of, is the whole program a sham? Yeah. Actually, and that they're using it about that is, as a way of... Like, there is no right answer to this question. Right. Uh, I mean, and they're using it as a way of prompting some release, sort of like how, uh, what is it? Um, Kevin's first wife is is doing yeah. back in the states. So yeah. some elaborate thing that allows people to have some sense of closure as therapy, or the opposite is sort of like the guilty remnant, sort of like well, this will mess people up. This will mess because <laughs> obviously it, it, it hurt the guy last episode. Right, he killed himself. Right. Uh, the fact that I mean. I don't know. If there is a right answer, maybe, you know, if if the woman offering her baby, hold my baby while I go interview, if that's part of the test, and they saw that Nora took the baby in that instance, and then didn't just ditch the kid. Right. And actually, it was like, oh, I got to go back, and I got to do that. Oh, and I got to catch the bus. Like, she went through all these hurdles to make sure the kid wasn't going to suffer for any reason. Maybe they thought, okay, well, she would obviously answer... I ain't killing no kid for cancer. Right. And the fact that she then said, she gave the answer, she lied to herself maybe, or she mm. said something that was not true to herself, and that's why she got rejected. I don't know. Mm. And then it's a tough, it's tough to know. But I, I, part of me is starting to think, you know, because the show kind of goes to great lengths to give you a reason why this isn't BS. Like, oh, see, there are all these people, and they disappear, and Nora says, and I checked them out online, and, and, uh, there's no record of them after having done this procedure. I mean, you could easily make up a reason why that is. Yeah. You know, they're all part of a cult or a program, like a guilty remnant type program. And they, you know. Or they're all killed like she thinks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that, I'll say this. The scientists seemed genuinely interested in the program, that they weren't, I don't think they're out for cash. I mean, they would have taken her cash, I think. Right. I don't think... They didn't seem malicious. I mean, obviously, you could not seem malicious and be malicious. Yeah. But 
so I don't yeah, know. I, I, I'm not willing to commit to what the thing is because, like, I I can see it going either way. I like your concept of that they are like a Lori. Mm. That Lori is using this con artistry is a helpful therapy uh, to believe believers. I, you know, the the, the, the point that uh, Marklin Baker went through. They're like, oh, where's Marklin Baker? Oh, he did the process. Yeah. That even seems weird to me. Like, why would he? Go, why would he wait for 119 people and then just on this one, this one person he recruited happens to be the time when he went through? Eh, right. and that's that seems like, right. you know, an art. You know, like a, we, we're not going to talk about that anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, that he's still around recruiting, but the way that they kind of just avoid him having to be there is, oh, he went through, he's on. You know, I don't know, maybe. Just saying. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if yeah, if if the idea that it, that it's therapy is true, then either a he, you know, experienced the therapy and and as part of that, it's like okay, now I'm not gonna. I mean, setting people's expectations you know. up. Come come to Australia with twenty thousand yeah. dollars, and then just drop the road like that expectation. Drop it out from them. It's an <laughs> yeah. I think it's a form of therapy that they think is good, and obviously we've seen is. Uh, Luck, can have yeah. devastating yeah. consequences. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, all right. So back to Kevin calls Lori while well, she, she's actually doing the con with John. Um, right. And in fact, there's a there's an interesting moment where um, the, the guy that John is talking to doing the therapy for is like, hey, can you also talk to my sister? And when Lori does the little computer search on her, finds out she departed. She's like, abort, abort, yeah. we're not doing this. Yeah, she had initially spoken to his sister, I guess, or something. I, I think the sister was the departed one, but... No, oh, but you're right, whichever. the sister, yeah. It was somebody that he, he had died, and so he's... It, right, the initial person was scam. dead, the second yeah. person departed, and they're like, sorry, when yeah. they depart, we can't talk to them anymore, and they come up with a reason. Right. So and, you know, I guess in terms of uh, what they're doing, potentially that would probably end up drawing more attention to them, and have people come there out of desperation, and then an attempt to provide closure wouldn't be the same because they'd be saying that we can talk to the people who've gone over, yeah, which would be like you know that opens up like a new can, can of worms. worms. Yes, yes, the worm can. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, so even this might suggest what the ultimate shows. Uh, theory of it is which is you're never going to know what caused this please don't let us know actually yeah, really? i think i've come to that conclusion oh, like, hell don't yeah. do it oh, don't don't, yeah. don't have them all drifting in heaven or something like, yeah, I don't know. it, would well, be it was interesting what she was what the scientist was saying where it's like oh yeah i'm not convinced i'm not doing it because i'm not convinced that uh, the wherever they went yeah wherever they went do they have enough food to survive they have oxygen oh, you're, you're gonna find 140 million yeah. corpses yeah. floating in space <laughs> <Yeah>. like, oh, <laughs> yikes yeah so it's, dystopian thought there but right, yeah right um so kevin uh talks to Lori. he's like I, I found evie and here's a picture sends the picture um and asks Lori to track this woman down Lori, in while she's talking is looking up the name and is like oh did, did you see her at the library uh Kevin takes that information to be like, oh, you're, yeah. oh, is this person works at the library. Okay, I'm going to go to the library. She's like, <laughs> do not approach this woman. He's, he's, he's obviously going to approach the woman. So Kevin takes off, uh, goes to the library, and <laughs> first of all, he asks a giant koala bear where the library is, <laughs> which is, they didn't have as much comedy in this episode, but that was, they, you know, these two comedic beats, mm-hmm. followed by another comedic beat. Um, oh, I was looking for Denia. She was helping me find a book. What book's that? Oh, Assassins. <laughs> Which is a musical. He maybe could have found the libretto for it, but um, <laughs> but he's he. That's his improv. That's his go-to book. Is in, and then she's like, "There's no assassins here." And he's like, "Yeah, I know." She was helping me though. <laughs> it's like it's just, it's the worst. He he goes down this cul-de-sac of uh, you know his attempt at subterfuge is awful. Yeah. So she's like, get him out of here. Yeah. Um, but Evie shows up. It's like I know him. His name's Kevin. Bring him in. So 
Evie, <laughs> air quotes, talks to Kevin. He's, he gets upset with her. Why did you leave? Tell me why I got, you know, John's my friend. And he wants to know more about it. And then she breaks down. He's like, look, this woman called me and told me to tell, you know, tell you that I'm Evie. Yeah, because he was like, why are you still speaking with an accent if you're admitting that you're Evie? Yeah. Um, and so he, re so Lori called ahead to this woman and says, if Kevin shows up, it's it better for his delusion that you pretend that you're Evie. Uh, well, she mentioned before, that's in a previous episode, she's like, don't tell delusional people that they're delusional. Right. Although, you know, she said, why did you, you know, and she was saying how she was feeling compassionate for him, so maybe she had... Uh, express how he's suffering or whatever and so you know she thought she could you know tell him that and it would go all right yeah <laughs> uh it didn't no so kevin calls Lori, angry she is having dinner with john which becomes a kind of a, a bit of conflict there because yes. uh, kevin is threatening to tell john i know where evie is she's right. in australia right. and so Lori has to deal with this problem yeah. Now. And so she uses her psychiatry skills and in, a, in an effective scene, yes. basically says, I'm going to tell you something here. Just listen to me. That's not Evie. Now look at your phone. I don't think she says that first. Didn't she say that first? I thought I she said she... it's not Evie. Like she had to put it, she had to plant in his mind that it's not Evie. Oh, Somehow he maybe, says that. And then, because right. if, if he was just looking at the phone, he would just see Evie again. I think she says, that's not Evie. Okay. I could be Maybe wrong. Maybe right. Yeah. She says something along I feel like those lines. He, I feel like there's a way that, you know. But yeah, go ahead. So uh, he looks at the phone. It's obviously not Evie. And then he looks up from the phone. And he sees the woman that he's been thinking is Evie the whole time. It's not Evie. Yeah. Different actress. Right. And he's, you know, but what she says, I'm leaving now. Yes. <laughs> and you can't blame her. <laughs> no. she, she'd been awesome, actually. I mean, in terms of that yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. Very giving. Trying to be helpful. Muslim people are great. <laughs> <laughs> That's the message of the entire. <laughs> um, so Lori tells him, look, just go back to the hotel. Talk to Nora. Call me when you when you've talked to when you and Nora are together, just give me a call or something like that. Well, earlier she's questioning why he's even there. Um, right. And he said that he went with Nora. And oh, yeah, yeah. Because Nora needed me to go. And, like, you left your family without telling anybody. And, you know, why are you doing this? And so, yeah, she said, she she's theorizes. Kinda, she's kind of let saying that you're losing it, man. <laughs> she's, or, and she also says the reason you think you're seeing Evie is that you uh, you understand her. And her need to escape. Ah, yes. And that you, Kevin, are feeling a need to escape. Yes. And that's where he says, you know, she says, look, for instance, you're in Australia. <laughs> you have responsibilities. You're a cop. Yeah. The apocalypse is coming. Yeah. Why are you? And he's like, I didn't, I came here to be with Nora. She's the one who ran away. And he says she ran away. Uh, yeah. And that's when Lori says. Uh, are you guys doing are you, okay? Are you guys doing okay? And then he gets defensive. And so his response is. Ask John about that book he wrote about me. So he kind of spills the beans that they've been writing this Bible about, right. him, I think. And then hangs up. So we, uh, I think that's when we see the Nora situation happen. Or some, we've already talked about it, but yes, right. Nora gets rejected, is upset about it. They drive away. <laughs> She's like, come back. Yeah. Uh, and they they meet back at the hotel. So they, you know, they're back in the hotel room. Yeah. And basically... He first he says, okay, time. even though you've seen that he's been beaten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's got his, his eye. You know. She is... She is so outraged that yes. she got turned down. Yes. And his point is even... And she's like, oh, and they, uh, they turned me down. And he's like, oh, did they take your money? I mean, he's thinking if the scam... Oh, it was a scam and they took her money and then turned her down. So he says, oh, did they take your money? No. Oh. I thought it was a scam. Oh, and they're just, ah, they're horrible. And well, I mean, you know, if they're smart enough not to get taken by her, she's going to expose them. Right. That's what, that was her but, response. Is, oh, they must have figured me out. Right. And so she still wants to get them because of that. Yeah. Which, you know. But I think she really wants to get them because they turned, they, she was not fit. 
somehow. They they deemed her unfit to go visit her right. kids. But for me, though, I see it in the same light as when she saw the woman who was claiming that, you know, that her husband had, when he didn't, uh, ascend to heaven. So she was like, no, I'm not going to let if anybody have that fantasy. I'm going to <laughs> expose them. <laughs> so it feels like more of her, you know, like, okay. you know, the, the anger at, at, yeah, survivor's okay. outrage. Okay. Okay. I I miss I'm reading it differently than that, but I can see what I see your point. Uh and I think that's kind of the show is doing that intentionally. They still mm-hmm. they're leaving that as a question mark. Yeah. What are her true yeah. motivations yeah. in this moment? So, they have it out. They're both at a weak place at this point. He mentions they, they should call Lori. She's like, "What are you talking to Lori? Are you talking to Matt? I mean, and you're telling them about all your, you know, why don't you talk to me? Right. Can't you know?" And he's like, "Yeah, I can't talk to you about anything. Remember the last time when he handcuffed me?" So uh, she's like, "What do you want to tell me?" Yeah, well, I think first he burns the book. Oh, he's like, is something about the book. Oh, the book. Oh, because you think you're so high and mighty. He's like, oh, I love the book. Which, you know, I'm wondering yeah. if he really does love the book. But he, uh, he burns the book. In a fit of anger, he he just torches it. Uh, and, and then there's... Oh, and before that, uh, Nora was covering up the fire... The fire extinguisher so the she fire, could smoke. Uh, yeah, the, what, the fire sensor or whatever. Yeah, the fire sensor, right. Um, <laughs> and so when he sets that stuff on fire... It sets the sensors yeah, off yeah. anyway. Um, well, because it really is a fire at some point. I mean, it, it might have been when he opened up the door to walk out and the smoke went out into the hallway. Um, or just, the, yeah, there's so much smoke in there that they're like, oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, so they they basically start hurling verbal daggers at each other. And she asked him why he didn't stop her from giving, getting rid of Lily. Right. And it claims that, you know, and you wanted it the whole time. You just wanted it gone. And like, you never asked me. And, you know, there's there's a tension about that moment. And then it ends with, he's like, you know, what, you don't want kids because then you can't be the victim. You have to be okay. You can't just be, continue to be the victim. And, you know, you have to face it. You have to get past it, past the fact that you lost your kids. Right. She's like, they're, I didn't lose them. They're not lost. They're gone. And he says... Uh, then maybe you should go join them. Something, something like that. Something like that. It Which was is like pr- really cold. Like wow, ah, that's not a oh relationship. That's a that's a this relationship's advantage. over. I'm cutting <laughs> the ribbon that holds us together. Um, and then he leaves. Yes, leaves her sitting there uh, in this room. Which eventually the sprinklers come on, and it looks like she's crying. Right. The water's kind of just pouring off her face. And she's sitting there, and the, yeah, she's uh, not. And the, and the the water starts making the power go out, so the yes. the lights go off as they short out. He leaves the hotel and runs into his dad, uh, who has come to find him. Saw him on the TV, of course. <laughs> and then so they have a little reuniting thing, and he asks him, "Are you alone?" And he's like, "Yeah, yes, I am." He's like, "Well, you're not alone anymore because I've got crazy woman in the car with me." <laughs> And so they drive off. So at first he asks for a cab uh, to the doorman. And the doorman's like, oh, no, taxis are closed down. Don't you know about the explosion? And we learn also that the planes are grounded. So there's a big explosion that has happened in Melbourne. Yes. And it's not smoking. No. Um, no, (laughs) They haven't shut that down. So... Something big has happened. Is I, I would guess Except sabotage. On the airports, which we're going to see more of next week. I think with the coming apocalypse, there's probably maybe some acts of sabotage happening, or people, I don't know, create riots, or I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather believe it's you know human caused rather than something. You know, we're getting close oh, to the right. apocalypse. <laughs> the radiating machines have exploded, and now they're. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so that is looks like it's impacting next week because we were asking this question. Two weeks ago, I think. If they're all going to Australia, how are they going to bring the rest of the cast with them? Well, they figured out a way. First on the phone. Yes. And now, according to the trailer for next week, Matt and Lori. And Mar- uh, John. John. At least those three are coming to Australia. Yeah, not I think, their daughter. I, I think it's because, you know, uh, Kevin mentioned to Lori, oh, I'm in Australia. What? Oh, and then she's going to impart that to those guys, and they're going to be like, "We got to get to Australia." 
So, but they, because their flights are canceled, it appears that they have to go by boat. That's what the trailer kind of suggested to me. Mm. And so you see Matt on a boat and there's a bunch of, there's like a cult on the boat anyway. But yes, that's, yes, that's coming. Yes, that's so coming. it looks like it's going to be more about the other folks from Miracle that are coming to Australia. Yes. And we'll see more about them next week. But we will uh, check that out next time. So stay with us. We will be doing American Gods and The Leftovers next week. Everybody is wondering Bye, everybody. Where-